Good morning. Hey, there's one guy that's alive. <laughs> that's good. This morning, I want to speak to you about it is well. Now, you might think, what is this guy talking about? It is well. And the which rock has he been, been hiding? Doesn't he know about all the things that happened in our country in the last two weeks? The COVID virus, the looting, the stealing, the breaking of businesses. Yes, I've also watched TV and I've also seen all of these things happening. But yet this morning I want to say to you, it is well. It is well with you. It is well because we have an hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We aren't manipulated by circumstances. This morning I might ask you this question. How many of you are feeling it is well? This morning some of us might sit, cast the ink, there's another hand. Some of us might have experienced loss in business. Our focus has been on something else. The loss of a loved one due to the COVID-19. All of us standing here and sitting here this morning can identify with something bad happening to us. You might have lost your business. You might have lost your income. And this morning your focus might be on that which you have lost. But I want to say to you this morning that if you have God in your life, it is well. You have something different to focus on. You see, we are of the world, but we are not in the world. Our outlook is a little bit different. And when the world looks at you, they look at you differently because they want to identify with that hope, that security that you have. They want to cling to you. They are drawn to your positive outlook because they don't understand why you are joyful and why you are happy. So my scripture reading this morning comes out of Hebrews 6 verses 19. And that is, is that we have this hope as an anchor for our soul. Now, an anchor is something on a boat. Now, here in the Northern Cape, I don't think we have boats. Maybe a, a little jet ski to drive on Mother River. And for surely we aren't driving on Compass Dump uh, on the river or the dam on Compass Dump. Because that thing is polluted. But an anchor is that thing that you drop into the water that secures the boat. When stormy weather arises, that's the thing that is hooked into the soil or under a rock that keeps you steady. And for those guys that want to fish from the boat, that is to, to sort of, and it's not you guys, to spill your coke while you're busy fishing. Because people in the church, they don't misuse coke. <laughs> so what I want to say to you this morning is that that anchor is secure. It's fast. And it holds the boat in place. It helps us to know that we are secure. But the scripture reading that I want to take is in 2 Kings 4 verses 14 to 16. And it says, what can be done for her? Elisha asked. Haasi said, she has no son and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, call her. So we called her and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. No, Lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead your servant. The child grew. And one day he went out with his father, who was with the reapers. He said to his father, my head, my head. 
And his father told the servant, carry him to his mother. After the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. Now I just want to stop there for a moment. This was the promise that was fulfilled in this woman's life. Elisha asked, what does this woman need? And we, we are reminded of her hospitality towards Elisha. How she treated him and how she built a room. And how she went out of her way to make Elisha feel comfortable. And Gehazi said, she's got no son. And in that time, it was like a curse. When a woman didn't have a child, it was like God wasn't with her. And Elisha said, Gehazi, what does she need? And Gehazi said, well, she's got no son. And her husband is old. So Elisha called her and spoke a promise into her life. By next year, this time, you will have a son. What I want to say to you is that that promise, that son, died. And many of us sitting here this morning, something died in our lives. In this last year, with this COVID-19 and the loss of work, the loss of income, we have even lost loved ones. Our focus and our heart was battered. And I want to say this morning that God is looking at your heart. He's looking into your soul. And He's looking where is your hope? And where is your faith? I want to continue with this reading. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and then shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and a donkey so I can go to the man of God and quickly return. Why go to him today? he asked. It is not the new moon or the Sabbath. That is all right, she said. She saddled the donkey and said to the servant, Lead on and don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at the Mount Carmel. And when he saw her in a distance, the man of God said to his servant, Gahasi, Look, there is the Shumanite. Run to meet her and ask her, Hank, are you all right? Ask, is your husband all right? Are you all right? Are your child all right? Listen to her response. Her son just died. She says, everything is all right. Was this woman lying? Her son just died. But yet her response is, it is all right. It is until she gets to the man of God that she falls on her knees and grabs a hold of him. And Elisha says, I don't know what is wrong with her. Because the Lord has withheld that from me. Why did God withhold that critical information from Elisha? Why didn't he share it with Elisha? That this woman has lost a child. I believe, and that's my opinion, is because if Elisha knew about the turmoil that this woman was going through, he most probably would have gone to her house. But it was her test. It was her test to go through, for her to come through to the place where she would put her faith and her hope into action. That she would come to the man of God and speak to him and share her innermost secrets. Isn't that what God wants from us? 
Isn't that what God wants for us? To come to Him and to come and share our burdens with Him. We don't have to go to the man of God to share our burdens. We can go to Jesus Christ in our prayer. We don't have to run to the church and say, please, this is what I need. I want to say to you, one of the things that pulled this woman through is, she remembered, she remembered what God did. Why do I say that? this? She remembered that Abram was also without child in his old age. She remembered that God blessed him. And she remembered the story that Abram had to sacrifice Isaac. This was the hope that she clinged to. This was the hope that she held fast to. And I believe this is the same hope that she used to propel her into the direction that God wanted her to go. You see, when trouble hits us, we are not sure where we want to go. So she remembered what Abram did. Some of us will go through struggles. And we will not know which way to turn. You see, if our mindset becomes polluted, we will follow our mindset. But if our mindset is set on God and on His promise, we will follow God and we will follow His direction. I want to read to you in Hebrews 13 verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So if God could do it for Abram yesterday, <coughs> why wouldn't he do it for her today? Then why wouldn't he come through for you today in your moment of trouble, in your moment of struggle? Why will God not reach out to you if he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow? 2 Kings 20 verse 3 says, Remember, Lord, how I walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what was good in your eyes. And Hezekiah <coughs> wept bitterly. Hezekiah was just informed by the prophet that he was to die. It's not like the doctor saying, you've got a couple of days left, you're going to die. God spoke to the prophet Isaiah and said to him, go to Hezekiah, tell him to get his things in order because he's going to die. Guys, I think if somebody shares that message with me, I will be shocked. I'm not sure how I would react. But Hezekiah turned away and he turned to the wall and he wept bitterly and he said to God remember God the things that I did sometimes we have to come before God and say to him God remember who I am do you know who I am I am David your son and I'm struggling Lord it feels father God if, if you have left me I don't know which way to turn and now Lord God it seems like you have abandoned me Remember, Father God, the things that I have done. And I am your son. And the word says that Isaiah haven't even left the courtyard when God instructed him to go back and say to him, I've added 15 years to your life. How many of us sitting here won't be excited about that? Hezekiah? It is well. You are not going to die. You can continue with the things that I want. Some of us, you are sitting here and you're thinking, really? Can God do that? Yes. God can do the impossible because our hope 
is on Him. Hope is something that we, we trust in somebody else to do. When I was younger, I used to skydive. And who of you know that if you skydive, you need a parachute? Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit messy. You see, I put my hope in the parachute. And when I take it, I look who signed the parachute. Because that person is going to be liable if something happens, if that parachute malfunctions. It's the same with God's word. God honors his word. God is liable for his word. So I put a little bit of hope in the parachute, but that's like sort of a wish. I wish this thing would open when I jump out. Because I can't return it. It's going to be a little bit of a problem. But you see the difference between a wish and the word of God is that God's word sees the impossible. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the confidence of things being hoped for. Now faith is the evidence of things hoped for. You see, what I hope for is the evidence. The parachute, I hope it will work. My faith is activated in the moment that I put it on and I jump out of that plane. Then I really pray that the thing will work. Remember what God did for you. And Hezekiah said, God, remember the things that I did in this life. It's not arrogant to come before God and say, I want to say to you that God is not moved by your struggles. He is moved when you pray. God is never moved by our struggles. You can struggle, but the moment that you open your mouth and you share your heart with God, he knows that you are trusting. He knows that you put your focus within Him. Then I want to say the second thing is, have an attitude of gratitude. You see, Hebrews 6 verse 19 says, We have this hope as an anchor for our souls. Firm and secure, it enters into the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. And I've spoken about this. An anchor is something that holds a boat. Hope sees the invisible. Hope is about living and wanting to live. I can assure you that whenever I put on that parachute, I want to live. I want to experience the joy of living. The fact that what drives you to get out of that plane is the, the faith that you have in the equipment. And our living is exactly the same. Is our faith in the Word of God. If I say to you this morning that through all your struggles, have an attitude of gratitude. You know what? You are still alive. You can still make an impact. You can still encourage somebody else we live in a broken world we see people suffer God calls us to encourage them that is an attitude of gratitude my friend it can go terrible with you and I can stand here today and I can share with you about losing loved ones and having loved ones in the ICU but every time that I got that news, I went into my inner sanctuary and I said to God, God, will you have mercy on them? God, will you spare them? God, will you just be with them? God, I'm your son. And I come before you, Father God, because my DNA is connected to you. And that's why God I've got this attitude to come to you and say, God, nothing is impossible with you. You see, I can see God moving the invisible. God fulfilling the hope that I have within me. 
And then I want to share the last point with you. Be dependent on God. The same way as this woman held on to the promise. Hold on to the promise of God in your life. God will not short circuit the promise that he has on your life. Only you can do that. Only you can walk away from God. And you know what? Sometimes when we go fishing and that anchor gets hooked up in the wrong place, we might have to cut that anchor off. And we might have to lose that anchor. And the only time that we do that is when that anchor is stuck in the wrong things. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Don't be conformed to the ways of the world, but be transformed in the renewing of your mind. You see, you can have two mindsets. One that says, it's going to be wrong, and it's going to stay wrong, because I'm of this family, and in our family, this always happens. Now, I want to say to you, you break that in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you are a son of the Most High God. You cut that anchor away. You step away from that negativity. Oh, you know that person is going to die because everybody died in the COVID. No, 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 no. I've prayed and I've spoken to God. And I know that God is listening. So I want to say to you this in closing. Check your heart. Look at your heart. Has it been contaminated? And if it has been, come before the Lord and repent. Say to Him, Father God, I'm sorry. And in closing, I just want to share these two scriptures with you. Restore the dream. Restore the dream. Begin to look at the promises of God. And it says, True hope comes from God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember what God did in your life. Have an attitude of gratitude. And depend on God. Because God can fulfill the desires of your heart. And be a blessing unto others. And I want to say this. Whatever you are going through. It is well. It really is well. Because God. Is looking after us. I would like you to stand with me as I close down before we partake of the communion. Father God, this morning I want to say it is well. It is well, Lord, because today we can stand in the house of the Lord and proclaim Jesus Christ as our Savior. We can stand here, Father God, and we can say it is well with our family, Father God, because you are with them. And Lord God, we can say it is well with our country because our hope is in you. And Father God, we bring our government before you this morning. And we say, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would come upon them, Father God, and that they would know, Lord God, that they are servants Father God, and that they have to honor the work that you do. Father God, may you bless us today. May you keep us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Anki. And now we have the honor of doing communion. And I just want to open my scripture. For those that haven't taken the communion out or got the communion, you can go and get that. And I want to ask you, just before we partake of the communion, I just want to read this in 1 Corinthians. 
Because for me, communion is one of the most important things. And, and I want to read this, and then we can partake. I know it's a little bit different, but bear with me. I'm new. So, in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord, on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink this in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are sick and some of you have gone asleep. What I want you to do is, the same way as the Lord, I want the families, husbands, to do this with their children. We are spaced, and if you're all on your own and you want to come to the front, I'll do that with you. But on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And he broke it. And he said, this is my body. Broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the blood of the new covenant. Drink this in remembrance of me. Whenever we partake of the Holy Communion is because we remember what God did for us. I want to give you a minute to just share communion with your family. Father God, I thank you that in this very moment we can say it is well. And Father God, bless us, keep us. May your face shine upon us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.